Hello, we're here with Prabharkar Shetty of l and Technology Services to talk about IoT in manufacturing and engineering services. Thank you, Rav. You're quite welcome. The, uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, how you define uh, digital engineering and, and how does that affect uh, the manufacturing industries? Good. Uh, digital is here to stay, but I'll give you a slightly traditional explanation to that. Uh, if you look at today's product world, the complexity of a product in terms of mechanical, electronics, and software, which is embedded into the product, is uh, throwing up new challenges in terms of how you design a product and how you sort of manufacture a product and maintain it all the way till end of life of the product. Uh, add to this uh, the constraints which come in in the form of regulatory compliance, cost pressures, changing customer needs. This necessitates the organization which is agile at all levels. When I say agile at all levels, right from the design stage to after sales service stage. Uh, this is where we feel that digital transformation has an important role to play. Why? Traditional processes uh, have been a sort of sequential or what we call as waterfall uh, mode of operation where marketing sort of gives the specification, design teams design the product, then it goes into manufacturing and supply chain and service. What is missing here is the collaboration, uh, information flow uh, that is happening or expected to happen between these four functions is definitely missing. This is probably due to the lack of technical capabilities and process maturity. Uh, but with adoption of new age automation, whether we call it as IoT, analytics, AR, VR, and the kind of advent in terms of infrastructure, the capabilities which are available in today's computers, the network, the data capabilities, the kind of real-time information flow that is possible, uh, the enablement of cross-functional collaboration has become very easy. Uh, similarly, if you look at data availability for consumption at real time at every process layer, it is redefining workflow, it is redefining how we look at instructions, which in turn means that decision making is taking a paradigm shift. Okay, And uh, I would also say that this is opening up new revenue streams uh, where opportunities can come not only from the traditional avenues, uh, for example, we work with a medical devices major uh, where what started as a product design extended all the way till uh, defining if they want to do a crowdsourcing for repair and field service of their products, that consideration was to be embedded in the product design. Okay, So I feel that digital engineering is all this put together, getting collaboration, integration between organization functions, ensuring that the ecosystem outside is also made an integral part of the entire organization. So we've talked about engineering a little bit. Now let's try to bring that into the operating and IT worlds. Traditionally, the IT folks were separate from the operating folks, plant floor folks, they didn't talk to each other much. Uh, at the conference here, at the AOC forum, several people are talking about the convergence of IT and OT. Could you talk about that a little bit and, and the effect on architecture too? Definitely. Uh, if you look at uh, the traditional IT, like I mentioned earlier, uh, they were living in a parallel world. And uh, there is always a no man's land which existed between the IT and the OT world. And the IT world approach enterprise from a planning, scheduling, and what I call as pushed on instruction down to the OT mode. Uh, this is again, as I mentioned earlier, probably due to poor availability of real-time data, lack of process maturity, and uh, wider digital ecosystem which is available now probably was not available earlier. But with big shift in availability of data for process consumption at real time, uh, I would say that uh, many of these limitations have been sort of uh, addressed. Okay? Uh, the important shift here is that Earlier, IT was the core of most of the decision making and OT was probably the execution layer which had no active component in the enterprise story. But the difference with new digital technology inventions is OT has manifested itself as an active component of the enterprise. That means 
you need not wait for the IT for critical decision making. The decisions can probably be more at the OT level. Uh, for example, uh, can we capture demand signals and connect them to the OT layer? Okay. Uh, interestingly, we were working with the oil and gas major uh, where the initial project was just to monitor a few of the wells in terms of their productivity. Now we are extending that further and telling that the entire oil field, can we sort of bring the data up to abstraction layer and connect it to a demand management system. So what is happening is the OT is not limited to execution, it is also getting connected to the wider ecosystem uh, where certain critical decisions like whether it's demand, supplies, collaboration with external stakeholders can be made very effectively at the OT layer. Uh, similarly, the bigger shift I also see is how is the enterprise architecture when, I, when it comes to the various technology components or the uh, application components or process components set. Most of the older architectures had ERP in the center of the architecture. Today, it is moving from there to what is relevant to the enterprise. For example, it shouldn't be surprising to see a PLM or MES system being part of the core architecture. Okay, and what does this enable? One, it means that it's a world of specialization. If there is an products major who's talking to us in terms of revamping his entire architecture, he wants MES to be the core of the architecture. Similarly, there are companies where we are defining PLM as the core of the architecture and that's where the process and data resides and everybody else consumes from there. One of the biggest takeaway for this is, this enables what you call as an innovation cl culture vis-a-vis -vis the earlier process-driven culture. And I think that is the biggest plus, uh, I would say, personally, uh, uh, as the outcome of this architecture shift. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, your firm, l and Technology Services, is well known for its engineering services in, in plant floor control systems, MES, uh, maintenance management systems, design engineering systems. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how this digital technology is impacting your, your delivery model uh, for providing services in all, all those areas? Interestingly, it's almost similar to the question which we answered earlier. Uh, the traditional service model also had sort of the border lines clearly defined as IT service providers and OT service providers. And uh, the OT service providers uh, were not too visible because they were far closer to the plant, manufacturing, and design. Uh, with digital engineering and digital transformation uh, manifesting itself, I would say that the shift is happening from consultants to the practitioners playing a key role uh, in the future uh, definition of how the world is going to operate, how the manufacturer world is going to operate. The reason is simple, uh, like we discussed earlier, Availability of data at operation layer means that decision making, collaboration at operation layer. And when you have practitioners doing it, there is an implicit trust, uh, there is an implicit belief that these are the people who know what is happening. This is not a inanimate treatment to the whole process, this is more of a hands-on execution, touch and feel kind of uh, thing. So this is where we feel that uh, probably Engineering services companies are better poised to exploit opportunities which are coming uh, as an outcome of digital transformation implementation. For example, uh, we are already doing a lot of new product development around what we call as IoT-driven intelligent products, uh, helping them in the servitization model, end of life cycle, so on and so forth. The same thing is happening in our plant engineering design sections too. Now to enable this, so what is the core strength we had? We, we could understand manufacturing, we could understand design. What I mentioned earlier is bridging the gap between IT and OT, the no man's land. Uh, what we had done is we have created a group called as Digital Manufacturing Service, which looks at enterprise applications which straddle these four core areas. That is innovation automation, manufacturing operations, asset management, and what we call as after sales. Okay. So what is happening is, we are giving the complete component in terms of not only getting to the shop floor automation, getting the devices out there, and also helping have a wider view in terms of extrapolating that into whether it is analytics, AR, VR, digital twin, and so on and so forth. 
Other important aspect of this journey has been how effectively do we use alliance partners. And as you would have seen in today's exhibition, uh, the way, whether it is Rockwell or a ABB or a Siemens or a Dassault, uh, the entire shift in terms of their approach has been to build, I would, what I, I would call as a complete stack, which addresses right from shop floor to the top floor. Uh, this is where probably I see uh, the traditional ERP players are missing out and this new vendors or the new stacks which these people are building uh, are really helping specialists like us to reach customers with better value proposition. Uh, and most of this application vendors, we have got a 360 degree relationship where we do their product design, we do their application design, and we also implement their applications and consulting for their applications. Very interesting. Thank you for informing us of this. Uh, we've been with uh, L&T Technology Services talking about digital transformation and digital technologies. Thank you for listening.